Hey guys, it's Terenzo here for the first for the first time before eight o'clock. I'm recording a video. It's about six thirty in the morning here. Why am I up so early? You might ask. Well, that's because I have another very special interview for you as a part of the. I don't know if I'll call it a secret characters episode or if it'll just be its own special series. But you guys might remember I talked to Sam Radetzky of Survival Arts. Well, now I've had an opportunity to talk to Alex Easley, who was the announcer in Fighting Layer, the game you're seeing behind me. I think uh, most of you probably remember that it played Fighting Layer. One thing you remember about the game is the announcer because he was just so over the top awesome and upbeat and there he is announcing the name of the game. Uh, but I reached out to Alex and he very quickly got back in touch with me. He's in Japan now. I'm still in the USA, but we made it work and uh, you're about to see the product of our call so I just want to say thanks again to Alex for sitting down and taking the time to do this it really made my day um, and I know there's a lot of you watching it's gonna make your day to see this interview with Alex as well so um, just like usual I'm mainly gonna focus on the audio but I think I will sprinkle some uh, some clips from the Skype interview in there um, because of latency it wasn't the best connection so excuse any hiccups or things like that but uh, please sit back and enjoy this interview with none other than Alex Easley of Fighting Layer and other stuff too. Are you right? Are you ready? So in three, two, one. Hey everybody, welcome back to a secret character special feature. Today I'm sitting with uh, somebody I think you're all really going to enjoy, and that's Mr. Alex Easley, of course, who was the announcer most famously in Fighting Layer, but he also worked on a bunch of other stuff. And so I reached out and asked him if he'd come talk to me this morning morning for me it's late for him and he most graciously agreed uh alex how are you doing today can you just tell us who you are and what you're up to these days oh thank you thank you thank you wow it's such a surprise somebody <laughs> calling for something i did so many different years ago and i've done the games wow i haven't done any new games but at that time i did many different games announcers games and many different voices actually my main job is a singing and an MC and uh, also dancing and acting so just a jack of all trades master of none in Japan I've written three books for Japanese and study Japanese and I've written uh, some other books I'm involved in many different things especially I'm with the Tokyo Baptist Church in Tokyo and on prison ministry and refugees and orphanages and just doing a little bit of different everything and games wow something i did years ago is coming <laughs> back my past is following me well, at least it's a good part anybody. of your past <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's great uh, may i ask you a question when did you start doing this uh, so the interviews I really started just recently and it's hard to find you guys So there was another obscure really obscure title called survival arts I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it used yes, motion yes. captured actors So they took real people yeah. and they put them in the suit and filmed them and I found the guy that played a character in that just I was I was trying to think of what I could do for my channel because we really talk about obscure stuff and I just happened to find this guy's email and I was like well you miss all the shots you don't take. So I, I sent Sam, and his name is Sam, Sam Radetzky. Um, and I sent him an email, and sure enough, he responded and was about like you, and was like, yeah, sure, we can talk about it. And so I just love doing that so much. And so I've been looking ever since, and then I found you. So <laughs> I guess you found me on Facebook. Yeah, I did. Um, so I remember the announcing from the games, and like it was all these Japanese actors, and then there was an Alex Easley stuck in there. Uh, and then I did hey. find your Facebook, yeah, and of course I cross-referenced the credits, and I saw on your Facebook where you were living in Japan, especially during that time in the 90s, like, this has got to be the guy, you know, it's, it's got to be the Yeah, same that's guy. me, that's me. <laughs> so let me ask you, um, you know, you, we'll talk a little bit more about your, um, your work in the Baptist ministry, because I want to hear about that too, but I did some digging, and originally I believe you're from uh, the America and Pennsylvania up north. So can you just tell us how you ended up in Japan, uh, of all places? Right. I can't believe it myself. I'm from a small town, a suburb of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, called Homestead. And I lived there until I graduated from high school, and I was interested in doing Broadway musicals 
and I moved to New York. And while I was working in New York, I met some Japanese people that had a show on Broadway called Golden Bat. And after that show finished, the musical director, he made his own small, I guess, play with a friend of mine that I was working with. And she knew I was a singer. She said, please come audition for our new musical. It's the Japanese man who wrote all the music and I'm writing the lyrics. I said, oh, okay. And it was at a small, tiny theater called La Mama's in New York, mm -hmm. famous at that time. So we did the uh, musical called Tokyo Diary. Then after that, the famous Japanese designer, Kansai Yamamoto, he designed our clothes for the musical. He wasn't famous at that time, but uh, about a couple of years later, he started doing David Bowie's costumes for his stage wow. presence. And also the record company brought us to Japan. It happened so quickly within like one month, I was in Japan. And then uh, we toured with Shimoda. We made an album and toured with him for about six months to almost a year. And after that, I got some modeling work when my face was back like that. <laughs> <laughs> and singing work. And I uh, was also an announcer for uh, a martial arts called shoot boxing. I did that for about 25 years. And then that's when the game started happening in Japan. And they needed uh, people that can do voiceovers for the games. And my friend's friend had a company that was doing it. And they called me and said, can you do it? I said, yes, because I'm an actor. I'm supposed to do many different voices. So that's when I started doing the games. And that was my first experience with uh, doing voices for games. It was very exciting. So once I started doing that, then I got many callbacks for many different games because I was able to do many different voices. <laughs> <laughs> so in particular, I want to say most people that, at least in the circles I run in, they remember you for a game called Fighting Layer, uh, which was I mentioned earlier when we were talking, was developed by a company called Arika, which is just a tiny little company. They're still around, but they're pretty small. And then they were published by Namco, which is this big giant company. I know you've probably heard of Namco. Yeah. But you've done a bunch yes. of other games as well. Just checking your, there's some pages out there that list actors and you're on there. So you did um, Fighting Layer, which is the famous one. I don't know if you remember a particular Fighting Layer, but there was also Mock Breakers. You played a Jamaican, uh, that game is like a, a supernatural track I, meet. And you were, you were this Jamaican guy in that. Yeah, you had the purple hair. I remember that because the the game I did the voice for before, one of the guys who was 18 years old who designed a character, and he saw me doing that uh, dub over just before, like in another job, and he came back with this Jamaican character. He says, this is you, this is you, you have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I definitely remember that. That's one of the things I said, what? I don't have the Rasta hair. He said, but this is you. This is you. <laughs> and I did that. <laughs> so what was it? Can Sorry, you just tell English us? So bad. I lived in Japan so long. My English is really bad. I'm so used to speaking Japanese every day. Um, so can you tell us just a little bit about what it was like uh, in the recording studio and, and doing work for these, you know, what's it like going in there? Were you recording long hours? I mean, what, what kind of work were they making you do? Uh, what was the voice direction like, with, especially with you being a non-native speaker? I bet that made it more complicated, right? Uh, well, that time I was, we had a, I went through a company and say they brought somebody there to translate everything for us at that time. At that time, I, you know, just speak a little bit of Japanese. So there was a company always came with the manager and she would translate anything. And actually, it depend on um, what they wanted. And so most of the time we didn't see the script until we got to the studio. Mm -hmm. So they had other people before us doing their takes. So we had about an hour to go over the script. And then uh, it depends on how many different voices they wanted. 
So one time I had to do a younger voice like this, yeah, something like that for a younger character. And then I had to do the pilot who was on the aircraft and it was exploding and you had to get an exploding voice. And <laughs> then characters. Sometime I was asked to do three or four different characters. So, and then sometimes to switch back and forth, it was like crazy. But most of the time you would stick with that one character and then they would overdub you with the other character, something like that. So it was really, I wouldn't say exciting, but it was just, since I had never done it before, the first time that I did it, it was exciting for me. And it's usually done in a small studio and the studio is very tiny. Uh, where if I stretched out my arms like that, I would hit the wall. <laughs> so it was really tiny, small studio. So it was like, uh, and most of the guys there were like uh, 18 and 19. And I was saying, wow, how can these young guys make something like this? And they said, most of the time, their age is up to 25 and then it's like retired and they move to the younger generation, like 18, just coming wow. up. I said, no, <laughs> it was like that back then. So once you reach 25, sorry, time to retire. <laughs> and when you say reach 25 and retire, are you talking about the voice actors or the people that were actually making the games and designing the sound themselves? That were actually games, actually making the games. Yes. Yeah. I don't, and this is kind of like, joking but most of the time when I did the uh I was doing it maybe for about 20 years altogether and most of the time I didn't see anybody who vented the games who were over 25 most of the people over 25 were like the directors or the staff in the recording studio so it was mostly just 18 and 19 and 20 years old at that time I don't know about nowadays hmm. You see a mix nowadays and, and you hear that story a lot, like, um, like in Japan, you know, like a lot of people, like I really love the Castlevania series by Konami and a lot of the people mm. at that time were just people that they got out of college and they had maybe a programming degree or a music degree, kind of like you. And you know, it's like, I need a right. job and there's this game company over here hiring. And yeah, sure. I'll go program, you know, what is it? Chip tune for the. The, the the Famicom where you're from, but the uh, the Nintendo Entertainment yeah. System. Yeah, I'll go program for it, you know. And so you did end up with a lot of these young guys, and there's some of them still in the industry today. So you did some fighting game work, which of course is how I found you. Uh, one of my favorite series, Tekken, Katsuhiro Harada, who was just recently promoted, but he was over that series for about twenty twenty or more years. So he sounds like he wow. was one of those young guys you were talking about that was um okay. that was over that. <laughs> So do you remember what the, um, I know you said you really didn't remember in specifically Fighting Layer, but do you remember what the first game you worked on was or anything about it? Or is it kind of lost to wow. you at this point? Yeah, it's, it's completely lost to me because I've done so many different kind of studio works for not just for games, but for TV mm -hmm. commercials and many different things. So it's completely lost to me. The first game that I did... I know that fighting was one of the first games that I did. It wasn't the first, but it's one of the first. Mm -hmm. It's impossible for me to remember because I've just done so many. And usually for me, once I've done the, that job, then I move on to the next one. <laughs> and the last job is finished and I have to clear my mind. Plus a different character <laughs> or different things I have to do. So, so. what about... Um... You said you had done other voiceover work. Like, what kind of other uh, voice roles and speaking? Um, I believe you said you did some announcing for karate. So, what other kind of like vocal work did you do in that respect? Right, I was a ring announcer for martial arts called shoot boxing, and it's a mixture of uh, wrestling and kickboxing together called shoot boxing. And I did the ring announcer for that for twenty five years. So. It was, um, I would announce, you know, red corner and blue corner, something like that. But we did a little different at the beginning. It was like kind of crazy. I would dance to the corner and say red corner and dance <laughs> to the next corner and say <laughs> at the beginning. But then after it got popular, they wanted kind of a straight kind of thing where I had to say aka corner or blue corner or something like that. Mm -hmm. It was more fun at the beginning. And uh, I did that for about 25 years. And then I was on TV 
for the MC for many different TV programs. <laughs> And I was a regular on late night Japanese TV as an MC introducing <laughs> music from all over the world. Ah, so, so many different things I have done. And so, you, you really have, are a multi talented person. And I wanted to talk a little about your YouTube channel because you do have a small YouTube channel. And so you've got some musical works, like some music videos and those types of things in there. And you've also got some weddings, so that's a big contrast, like a music video, and then here I am officiating a wedding. Uh, in particular, I want to tell you, I really enjoyed the song My Baby's Request, and it has like a, like a, like a Johnny Taylor or maybe a Tyrone Davis type feel to it. Was that what you were going for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. One of the, um, a Japanese friend of mine wrote that song, so he well, actually, it was that kind of feeling that he wanted for the song, so uh wow <laughs> so <Bringing> up my a <laughs> little history my my parents were actually in the arcade industry that's kind of how i became such a fan of it and so you know i grew up in the south and so when you when okay. you my parents basically leased out arcade machines they would like if you were a pizza place and you wanted one he would take them and so one of the places that we would go to would be the juke joints because we were down south and so those okay. type of places, that's the kind of music they would play. And so I really grew mm. up listening to that. And so I was like, oh, this reminds me of stuff, you know, dad used to listen to. And I would hear like when we would go change out the jukeboxes and things, it was that kind of music. So uh, did you attempt like a, like a R&B, like soul type career at some point? Or is that just a, a passing interest? How did that work? Um, actually, I uh, did all different kind of music. So for example, whatever the customer wanted. That's the kind oh, of music I, I did. So I did the heavy metal, I did the rock, <laughs> I did the pop. I, so, <laughs> so whatever the customer requested, I, I was doing the weddings and receptions. So mm -hmm. each wedding, they whatever they requested, I would do. So, uh, and I was so glad that when I was younger, like a teenager, 12, 13, 14, I listened to all kind of music. So mm -hmm. now I'm so happy I did that. So now I'm able to, I don't know what I do well, but <laughs> I, I do all different kinds of music, whatever the customer wants. So I just so, like doing it more interesting. Oh, I see. Well, that's, it's good to have varied taste and that you can perform that kind of range. So you were also doing weddings uh, on your channel and you mentioned being in the Baptist yeah. ministry. So are you a uh, are you a minister as well or were you just because you did the music they asked you to do the wedding? Uh no 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 I'm just uh, uh not a licensed minister I'm not a minister at all <laughs> just a Christian believer that's all just Amen all to that the church. <laughs> so I'm too bad to be a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> no uh, uh what it is in Japan um you can get a license for, uh, you don't really actually call yourself a minister. You just call yourself a, a wedding MC. Oh, okay. So, I didn't know that. It, it, it's like you're doing the pastor thing, but you don't, you're not an official pastor. You get a license just to be a wedding. You, they call it wedding minister, but really it's like a wedding MC. But it, it's it's just like being a wedding pastor, but it's not with an official license because most of the weddings here are on Saturday and Sunday. So mm -hmm. most of the Christian pastors are busy Saturday and Sunday. So they have to find these people like me to uh, officiate these weddings. And a lot of times the couple are not really Christians, but they like to have a Christian wedding. Mm -hmm. And so actually I sing at the weddings too. So the wedding company can get somebody who sings and can perform the weddings and it's cheaper for them. <laughs> oh, it's a matter of convenience. Yeah, so they save money. It's also enjoyable for me because uh, it's, you get so much joy from doing weddings from the couple and from the families because everybody's really upbeat and happy that mm. day. So it's really a blessing for me too. Then also I'm singing gospel music at the weddings and then sometime I do receptions and then I'm doing the pop music then. Or whatever yeah, they request. 
So I did find um, YouTube, actually. It's not on your channel, but it has a list of your gospel music. So are you like in a gospel band, like doing gospel on the side? Like, is that a main project or is that just part of the company's work that you're doing that? Uh, most of my, that's probably from the most of it's probably from the Tokyo Baptist Church here in Tokyo, which I've been singing there for about 40 years. So probably wow. most of the videos of that. And I released is it three three gospel albums so and just other people put their songs on their youtube and then it just shows up on youtube i don't have an official youtube page i just put everything on facebook and then people just go to my facebook page and listen to it something like that and then most of my songs are on uh um, not instagram but they're on um uh, itunes itunes Spock okay and all the, yes Yes, I thought so. they were really just, interesting because they were combining, like, I'm a Southern Baptist myself, so I know a little bit of where you're coming from, and they, you had this very, like, Southern old-style gospel, but you had combined it with Japanese instrumentation, so if, if you're watching and you, and that's something you might be interested in, you should check it out, because I thought it was, I thought that was really interesting, the way you combine those two. Um, for your audience. I know there's a very small Christian population in Japan. So is your church mainly like expatriates like yourself, or do you have like uh, Japanese people that what few there are Japanese Christians attending? Well, our church about more than 50% are Japanese. Oh, wow. And we have 51 different nationalities. Yes. What? It, it, well, it, 50, 51 different nationalities, believe it or not. <laughs> there's about 1,200 members, and there's 51 different nationalities. We have people from all over the world. A lot of the ambassadors that are in Tokyo come to our church. And a lot of the, um, I wouldn't say all, maybe half the Japanese there have lived overseas. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a really interesting church. It's a little bit different than any other church. And actually, we were connected with the Southern Baptist uh, leadership up until about 10 years ago. And then the church became independent. Oh, okay. And our pastor who just retired, he's in Texas right now. <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> I bet that's quite a stark contrast uh, to go from japan to pastoring again in texas or retiring to texas or whatever he chose to do <laughs> right <laughs> big big difference well, they, big culture shock yes they're originally from i forget what state i think louisiana they said they're originally from yeah and we have five different pastors so we have an indian pastor japanese pastor chinese pastor and uh uh Canadian, I uh, know two American pastors. So right now, so we're so coming up. It's on, quite. We're coming up on uh, thirty minutes. I don't want to keep you too long because I know it's late for you. Um, so we'll uh, ask just a few thanks. more questions, and I'll let you get back to it because I know you've got a ton to do. Um, when I first reached out, you mentioned that you hadn't done voice acting in a long time. You know, you hadn't done it. Mm. If that opportunity presented itself, uh, would you be open to do it again? Or do you think oh, I'm done with that? No, no, no. I'm open to everything. I'm really interested in doing any kind of work. It keeps my mind going. <laughs> so, and actually, I don't know how it's done lately. I haven't done it in more than seven, eight years, I haven't done any work like that. I've done like uh, MC work, but I haven't done any games in I think more than 10 years. So it would be interesting to see how it's done nowadays. It's probably very similar. Um, voice acting for games in general, I don't know about in Japan, probably the same in Japan, but in America it's really grown. Like there's a, a voice actors guild now. I don't know if there was in mm -hmm. the 90s for games, but there's a guild now and um, they're very prominent people like you think of somebody like d bradley baker i believe is that guy's name i mean you look at any game he's probably going to be in there so i imagine it's the same wow. Japan because a lot of companies now for the big big releases uh what they will do is you know like for example squaresoft or square enix now when they do final fantasy when they release the game in japan it'll have a fully japanese voice cast and when they bring it and westernize it for the west they'll rip all those voices out and they'll redo the lips to the best you know where they have to and they'll put like 
English voice actors in there. So it's a big industry now. It hasn't shrunk in your absence. Right. I know one uh, um, brother and sister who's in Japan. They were born in Japan, but uh, they, of course they speak perfect English and perfect Japanese. So the companies are is hiring people like that. So they do both voices. They'll do it in English and then they'll switch over and do it in Japanese. Oh. So they can cut both markets with one person. So that's <laughs> it's all about saving money nowadays. again, it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. For exactly, exactly. So what would you say um, to all the fans of your work in Fighting Layer and the other games? What would you say to them if you had a chance to speak to the fans of your work? What would you tell them? I'm just so happy to be remembered and so happy to be doing this kind of a show where I never in the world dreamed that anybody would call me up and ask me about <laughs> some game 10 years ago. So it's really exciting for me and showing that uh, people that appreciate the work that I did long ago is still being listened to and still being loved. So I'm just glad I'm still alive <laughs> to enjoy the. Well, praise God for that. It is good to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we've just about finished, and I, I try to ask my guests this. Um, is there any project or endeavor or like maybe song or whatever it is? Is there anything you're working on right now that you want people to know about? And um, I think you I was going to ask where people can keep up with your music. I think you said it's all on iTunes under uh, under your name, correct? Yes, it's on iTunes and uh, the songs are on Facebook. So um right now i'm just uh, working with refugees in japan and that's mostly what i'm concentrating on right now refugees and i'm with the prison ministry at my church and i'm visiting people inside prison visiting the refugees so that's basically what i'm concentrating on now i was singing at many different places like weddings and clubs in japan but now because of the coronavirus Mm -hmm. Everything is closed down. So eventually, hopefully by next year, I'll be back singing in live houses and singing at weddings and back into the music business. As of right now, it's like slowed down. But please stay tuned. <laughs> Keep watching my Facebook and I'll announce anything that I'll be doing in the future. Well, I'm, I'm unfortunately, I probably can't make you a superstar. I've only got... Um... I'm come. I'm closer. I'm closer to a thousand subscribers. I'm right at 750 ish. Last I checked, but I can promise you that the people who do watch my channel and there's, I'm going to share on Twitter. Uh, they'll be very excited. And I'll send you a link to the video so you can go and look at the comments and, and see what they have to say. No. But Alex, thanks so much for talking to me. Thank you. thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Take care. See you. All right. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. This has been Terenzo. I've been here with Alex Easley of Fighting Layer and more. Um, you can check out his work on uh, YouTube as well as iTunes. And of course, uh, he has. you can see a public part of his Facebook that you can go to check out his work. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching. Stop by next time. Wonderful. Thanks so much for listening to this interview with Alex Easley, the announcer from Fighting Layer. If you like this video and you want me to be able to find more people from your favorite obscure games, be sure to like and subscribe so I can make more. Also, check out the interview I did with Sam Radetzky, who played Dontel in Survival Arts. 